For some unknown reason, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen some quote-unquote prominent football commentators talk about how defenses running too high safeties or playing high coverage is turning quarterbacks into checkdown artists and making the game boring. Then recently, Mel Kuyper basically said that playing too high safeties should be outlawed. I do want to play a short clip of it so you can see for yourself I'm not making this up. Let's go ahead and play the clip. That's what I want to see brought back. Say, well, you can't do that, right? Well, you got a five-yard rule with the, the cornerbacks, right? The Mel Blunt rule, right? Now with the push thing with Hurts, you got to be a yard back now. So don't tell me you can't have those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage than they are. I was in games where I'm thinking, hey, too high? They're out in outer space. Two, I couldn't even find us. So they're playing with nine guys, right? Where are the other two? Oh, the other two, they're so daggone far back, and even though they're part of damn play. And I'm telling you, we got to change this thing, and we got to have, hey, you can warn them. I'm not afraid. They come up, hey, guys, you got to get up a little bit, right? You're too far back. <laughs> warn those safeties, but you got to figure out competition committee, somebody, Dano, somebody's got to figure out what that depth is, but it's too far <laughs> back right now. The NFL is being ruined by these too high safeties. Dude, what? Defense is playing too high safeties isn't a new thing. There are ways to beat it. Like, I don't know, running the ball or throwing underneath it. This is the equivalent of saying that wide receivers can't line up outside of the hashes. It's stupid. And to act like it's some new invincible defense that came out of nowhere is even dumber. Look up Bud Carson. Maybe people are doing it at a higher rate because you've skewed the rules so heavily toward the offense it's almost become a necessity. But I don't hear anybody complaining about that. In the NFL, DBs can't touch a receiver after five yards. You can't hit the quarterbacks anymore. And offensive targeting is about as common as common sense these days. And hey, Mel, safeties aren't the only ones who can play in high coverage. Corners can do it too. You can mix nickels in there with them. And when Mel finds out what cover three is, he might actually spontaneously combust. Now, if this was seven on seven, and you couldn't run the ball, maybe this rule would work. But we're talking about real football. If you don't like what I'm running, then force me out of it. And if I want to play with a light box or an even box, run it at me. We already have a new stupid kickoff rule. The extra point's different, and we've outlawed the hip drop tackle. Now I got to only play one high or creep my safeties down closer to the line of scrimmage every play? The, tr the truth is, you're telling on yourself. You're a casual, you don't know ball. And I want to leave you with a quote, Mel, from one of my favorite movies. Mr. Kuyper, what you have just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things that I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that be could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. And on that note, I'm going to bring in David Cohn, former mission quarterback, <laughs> my brother, former Western State, Colorado wide receiver. David, I'm, I'm, you know, Napoleon won a lot of wars, and they still exiled him. <laughs> I, we got it. You, you got to go. Like this is. At what point do you say something that's not just like a hot take, but so innately dumb and so just out there? I don't know if you can have him back on TV. Like, send him back to Transylvania oh, back or whatever. Th that's one of the worst things I've ever heard. Not because of what you said. It's because apparently you know nothing about football. Now I can't take anything else you say seriously, whether it's NFL draft evaluations or anything. You know nothing about football. Well, usually I wouldn't care too much what Mel Kuyper says. I really don't watch ESPN anymore, and that's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to be a part of this show. But one of the reasons I do think it is important to talk about this topic is because Mel Kuyper has influence in professional football. I mean, he really does. And combined with the fact we are seeing the National Football League change so many rules, we're looking at a completely different kickoff right now. And they call it the dynamic kickoff just from one season to the next. We've seen them change the PAT. They will change rules if they think that this will put up more points on the board, more scoring offenses. They will do something like this. And I just, it's it's so it, it's so aggravating because one of the best parts about football, and we talk about this a lot on this show, is the evolution of scheme, the mm -hmm. evolution of the game, a response to a response, an adjustment to an adjustment. And these days you're seeing so much more 10 personnel. 
right? You're seeing so much more 11 personnel, pass catching tight ends. You're not seeing so much 21 personnel with two backs, 22 personnel with full backs in the game, downhill, big bruising running backs. You're not seeing that anymore. So the natural response from a defense to try and adjust to an advantage the offense is trying to gain is to run more two high safeties, to run cover two. And also that it, we could talk all day about also, two high safeties at the beginning pre-snap to spin down into single highs. Yeah, one of it's the called best ways to, to, to confuse quarterbacks, which brings me to the next point, which is we're seeing so many more young quarterbacks being forced to play early in the NFL. And that's being talked about a lot today as a response to Mel Kuyper. But one of the reasons for that is the huge contracts on the second contract. Like, if, if you're going to be forced to pay a guy uh, entering year three or four who may hold out $65, $70 million a year and make him the highest paid NFL player of all time, after he has one good season, then yeah, you have to run him out there as a rookie or a second year guy. It's it, it's kind of insane to watch these young quarterbacks play at such an early age. But the biggest thing to me is, is if the NFL wants to change their rules, it's disappointing and it's frustrating, but they got to do whatever they want to do. I just hope this stuff doesn't bleed down to the college game. I, well, that's one of the reasons, uh, again, why I'm worried. And you brought up the influence uh, that Mel Kuyper you know, Jr. does have, which it's, it's a story all in its own. Uh, Blaine, trying to compare safety depth to the quote-unquote tush push is to use that as a, oh, well, you can change that so you can change this. Those two things have absolutely no correlation in the actual scheme of football. But then not understanding what cover three is, not understanding what Tampa two is, where you play with two high and then put the mic in the middle, kind of in, in a higher coverage, mm -hmm. I'm just, I know like Orlovsky and them can't really say anything back when somebody says well, Dan's like, not going to say anything but, back anyway. Yeah, I, I know Dan's <laughs> not. But like watching the reaction of actual knowers of ball, like this is like Mel Kuyper made the decision that I guess I'm on my way out. I might as well blow up the village while I'm on the four-wheeler driving full speed. I don't, I can't make sense of that. Well, I stopped listening to Mel Kuyper when he said Jimmy Clausen's going to win multiple Super Bowls, That's to be true. honest. But hey, Mel, let's take it even further. Let's go even further. Let's not even have defenses, all right? Let's just get the <laughs> offense, to hand them the ball in the end zone, let the defense go get a coffee break. The thing that people don't realize, having two safeties to take away that bomb play actually forces the offense to have a what? a strategy to actually know what they're doing. Unless you want to see Madden simulations every Sunday and every Thursday and every Monday where the score is 49 to 50 because that's what it'll turn into. These people are trying to turn football into seven on seven. We can see it in front of our eyes and they do have influence. And the more they talk, the more they it seems actually happen in the NFL. But it's good for us. You're seeing people who don't know football. All right, and they're putting them in the limelight at ESPN. Most of these people don't know they're talking figures. I'll never trust a guy with this big of a forehead, and that's much hair gel. David, no offense to you. I love your hair. But <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is perfect. This is perfect. It doesn't get any better for actual football fans out there seeing what they are really about. This is one of the... This is almost as dumb as a take when I had people coming out saying that the Wildcat was going to revolutionize yeah. football. <laughs> it's close into that realm. It's good for us. Mel, Ky Mel Kuyper knows nothing about football, and he's pretty mediocre at the draft board, too. Well, th that's, again, people say, oh, well, just stick to draft evaluations. If you don't know this, how can I take any <laughs> draft evaluation? The happiest guy in the world may be Todd McShay right now. Mm. Is Todd McShay the happiest guy in the world? He'd be like, Look, I told you, this guy really doesn't understand it. And, I, and there's a clip of when Mel Kuyper started. I think it was the Colts head coach or owner. He said something, and oh boy, just clowned them. Yeah, he was like, what do you, you know nothing about. Oh, actually, that was the owner before. What? The, yeah. I believe so. It just, you know, I, I guess maybe it was a trick, I don't know, to get people to talk about Mel Kuyper, but there's other ways to do it where we can talk about you. Not coming out and proving, A, you're a casual. B, you really don't know as much ball as casuals, apparently, if you're saying things like that. Uh, it just, it absolutely blows my mind. We want to know what you think. The phone lines are going to open um, uh, here in about 30 minutes, 1-855-236-3228. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But I heard that, like, I, I saw people reacting to it, and I hadn't heard the clip yet. I was like, I'm going to listen to the clip and see what he says. Maybe people are misconstruing it. No, no, you nailed it. We should, sh we should send him the huddle up from the USC LSU game. David, that would be, you might as well two. send him something the whole in shot. Korean. The whole shot. You might as well. And listen, we don't have all the answers. There's guys out there that know more football than us, but we know more than that. I can promise you, and to Blaine's point, I think it does illuminate. It shows 
when you bring people on that aren't really knowledgeable, and it's not a prediction thing, right? Like, you're going to get some games right. You're going to get some games wrong. Even the draft evaluations, you're going to hit on some of those, and you're going to miss some of those. But that is like stone cold stupid. Mm. It's like there's no debating how dumb what he just said. It's like the pup, like I said, the, the Billy Madison reference, the puppy who lost his way. I mean, I think even Miss Libby knows that, and she was putting glue all over herself well, in she, the kindergarten classroom. Yeah, she, and they're like, they're no, why are you lumping me in with well, Mel Kiper? Before I, you go in, yeah, that was, like why are you hair lumping hair in? Like, I, I said you liked I, you. You sport the hair a lot better than Mel. Okay, I go and say that. But isn't this just? Is are you surprised? Is anybody surprised? By I'm this? actually one thing, to change yes, the rules one thing that got a little me bit. It's the amount. There was really no pushback. There was really no. But pushback they can't. They can't there. Like it. Like. Like, if that was me on that set, and I think it was, it may have been Jason McCourty, who was like, if I was on that, I'd have walked off set. I don't, because we're, it's trash. It's TMZ, it's trash. Like, that's, that's, that's what it is. But you can't at that network, whether it's, it's him saying some, or these, these people that, because they look a certain way, they get hired to go on there and talk about football when they really don't know it, which it is what it is. It's just sad for me because I grew up when, like, ESPN was in its heyday, man. Like, mm. they had knowledgeable people on there. It was funny. They weren't afraid to, to you know, say what they really felt. And then you got, then you got Mel Kuyper coming on here just saying something in, in front of Dan Orlovsky. You say what you want about Dan and the Protect Our Daughters thing. Dan knows football. Look at their faces when he's saying it. They realize it's almost embarrassing to be associated with it. It's that bad. And I, listen, Mel Kuyper may be the greatest person on the planet. I don't know. He may give to charity. He may walk old ladies across the street. He doesn't need to be talking about football on TV anymore. Because if you did it as a trick to get people upset, you went about it the wrong way. Because now you look like a clown. Like, you look like you don't know. And you've been in football this long. You've done all these evaluations and talked to these coaches and all these people, and you don't know that? And then you want to change that? Like, the funny part is it's not even just running the ball against high coverage. Yeah. Hey, when people are going back, he said, they're playing with nine out there. If I'm an offensive guy, you're going to play with nine? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Because I can. it's not just running it. You can throw it underneath. And I'm not talking about the swing or the check down. There's ways to hit intermediate passing game. You want to send those safeties in the sky? I will throw the dig until you get a shovel yourself. And son. you can still beat two safeties deep. Yeah. yeah. It's not like run a post. Run a wheel. I don't know how you, I don't know how, I really am starting to believe it's like the political channels. The reason people watch it is because it's on in airports and sports bars. I'm really, I've got a lot of buddies who just don't watch anymore unless a game is on, right? They have a game on there or you're walking through an airport. I, I just, it, that is just wild to me. YouTube, what's up? It's an exciting time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for stopping by. And as usual, without you, there is no us.